Welcome back to the Instec London podcast. I'm Matthew Grant, one of the partners at Instec London. In our last episode, we brought you Zigo and Forest Car, who spoke at our recent event. Today, we're going to hear from a couple more people who were on stage that evening. This time, the founders of both launch companies that are creating new solutions for risks that have been around for over 100 years. With the emergence of IoT, or Internet of Things, there are high expectations for dramatic cost savings from the use of sensors being used for preventative maintenance in buildings and equipment. But commercial insurers are still struggling to find ways to take advantage of this new technology. Will Brocklebank, founder and CEO of Shepherd.fm, reckons he may have a solution. I spent 10 years in the building management systems business uh, with a company I founded, and um, it was from that that I realized that the world needed something like Shepherd, uh, and it didn't exist. Um, I'm also the chairman of the Artificial Intelligence Technology Group for the British Institute of Facilities Managers. Um, so I hope I know a little bit about this subject matter. Um, Shepherd is a technology monitoring platform for the built environment. Uh, specifically for the insurers, um, we exist to improve loss ratios and to extend the breadth of coverage you can offer to property and liability risks. Let's bring this to life. Today I was sitting with the head of the MOD's Army Reserve Base um, system. He has 54 sites across the country. Most of the sites average about a million pounds of maintenance spend a year. He hasn't got enough money to do everything he needs to do, and they have been known to close sites completely when the, the number of maintenance tasks they've got to complete gets so overwhelming, they just think, oh, Christ, I'm going to walk away. It's an absolute mess. Um, fundamentally, they need a way to get these ancient legacy assets to report more efficiently when they're going to break, when they're going to fail, and they're going to be able to uh, produce some preemptive maintenance actions. Um, Let's face it, when was the last time you paid a maintenance company to do anything for you and then they gave you any sort of guarantee that having walked out of your premises that the asset wasn't going to break thereafter? And if it did, they'd come back and fix it for free. It doesn't work. The dirty truth of the matter is that the facilities management maintenance industry is actually incentivized not to stop stuff breaking. In fact, the procurement model is aggressively cost engineered so that they get the planned preventative maintenance piece uh, at zero or you know, very slim margin. They look to make all their money on the reactive maintenance when things start going wrong. This is a disaster not just for clients but for insurers. This means that stuff goes wrong and then losses scale. There's a better way. Clearly, if you can monitor things and you can alert the right people, you can ensure that action is taken quickly and you limit the risk. But, again, incentive problem. Insurers and maintenance staff don't work together, even though they're two sides of the same risk management coin. So what Shepard does is we use best-of-breed IoT technology, not made by us, we are an analytics and alerting platform. We take the data from these devices or from existing building management systems. We push it up to our cloud platform. We use machine learning to understand what normal looks like for a particular asset. And then we alert the maintenance company directly that we see problems. They can then carry out preemptive maintenance, a 100 pound circulation pump breaking, if you fix it, stops a 10,000 pound industrial boiler from going pop. But equally, um, you can get them to sit on the same side of the table as the client and the insurer if you incentivize them properly in this relationship. So a couple of real-world examples. We've been going for a couple of years. Most of the first year and a bit was built, spent building the technology platform. We now work for BIFA, the large landfill company and waste company. We started by monitoring the two groundwater extraction pumps under the largest landfill site south of London called Red Hill. You probably don't know, but those pumps can only go down for about an hour before the groundwater rises to a dangerous level that could breach 
the entire landfill and leak all of the evil in, straight into the London aquifer. Fun times. Uh, it's pretty important, right? These things don't break. Um, so Shepard monitors those and directly connects those assets to the response force. We've gone from that in a land and expand strategy to monitoring all sorts of leachate leaks, gas pumping leaks for BIFA across 10 sites nationwide. In another example, we're working with someone you're going to hear later, Judy from Oil Spill, to um, monitor uh, the risk of environmental fallout from an oil leak. Uh, it could be domestic, could be commercial oil tanks. Again, the criticality is the speed with which you can understand that the pattern of usage in the tank is changing and you can get a responder on site. If there is a spill, you can clean it up fast. It changes something from being an absolute catastrophic risk and loss into something that is a relatively small cleanup operation. And there are hundreds of different examples. And from an insurance perspective, there are all sorts of areas where you can bind together existing property and liability risk, maybe with some business interruption, in a way that was never possible before because you're actually going to get real data on the risk in real time. And you know that there's a third party who's going to be incentivized to do something about it if it fails. And that's the critical piece. When I started, I thought all insurers were going to love built environment data, but then I realized quite quickly they don't. And the reason they don't is because what are you going to do if you suddenly had a data feed saying, ah, client, client, danger, danger, site A is going to go bang. It's like, what are you going to do? Ring them up in the middle of the night? Who are you going to ring? It's crazy, right? You've got to have somebody else who's already in the game. And that's why insurers and facilities managers are the two sides of the coin. These guys are boots on the ground risk management. You guys are capital risk management. Together, you're a beautiful marriage. And Shepard sits in the middle of you, helping you both operate. Oil Spill Insurance. It does what it says on the tin. Founder and former broker, Judy Haddon, tells us more. I've been in the insurance industry for all of my working life. So uh, unlike most, but not, not all of the people here tonight. And uh, I, the, the start of the, the Oil Spill story was just basically I sold a previous insurance broking company and exited. And um, I was asked by a previous client if I'd go and work and do some consultancy for their company. And their company were involved with a very innovative use of bacteria to clean up oil pollution, uh, very specific, um, which was a very interesting um, position that I, that I carried out. And... As a result of that and my insurance experience, it, it gave me, I think, a unique skill set. Probably, yeah, I, I think it was a unique skill set. And shortly after that, I was asked to, to um, review a household insurance claim, which was very straightforward. It was an escape of oil from an underground pipe. And, um, it, but it had taken ages to deal with. Um, insurers and loss adjusters had deliberated uh, policy liability and policy cover and what had happened and remediation consultants were involved. And it, it was going on for a long time. Um, as a result of that, for sure, um, the, the cleanup costs increased. And eventually, uh, insurers decided that they would that they would repudiate the claim. Now, the claim was approximately £200,000, and this was involved, you know, just somebody's back garden. And I was quite stunned by this uh, and went and decided to review not only that policy, but lots of different policy wording, household policy wordings. And I was, I, I was really surprised to see uh, that... There were, there were serious gaps in the, in the cover that was provided. M namely, uh, one of the, the, the main reasons for the repudiation of this particular claim were that the claim had happened over a long period of time, over about six months, we think, uh, and also that there was no cover for first-party land and water. And this, this was the same with all the policies that I reviewed, or pretty much all the policies that I reviewed. I looked at business 
um, small business package policies and similar gaps applied. So un unlike anything particularly fancy, um, it just seemed to me that uh, this cover was absolutely necessary. Uh, it was a potential c catastrophe cover that wasn't, that wasn't properly covered. So um, I thought the best way to tackle this was to, to invent or to, to, to create a standalone policy that provided pollution cover, um, emergency response, together with some risk management uh, that people could purchase separately in addition to their own policy covers. And um, this is what we, we set out to do. To, to, to give some, some further sort of information um, on this, there, there are approximately 3 million oil tanks in the UK and, and, and probably 15 million oil tanks in, in Europe. In, in the States and Canada, this, this insurance is, is common, just to have a standalone insurance policy for an oil tank, but it, it, it isn't over here. Um, there is a strict liability in the event that you do pollute from an, an escape of oil. Um, there is a strict liability to clean up, plus the possibility, potential for an unlimited, unlimited fine and penalty, criminal prosecution and potentially even um, a custodial sentence. So it's pretty important that it, that it doesn't happen. Now, um, we, we have just uh, launched our first policy, which is Workspill, which is a B2B to, B, B to B, um, insurance for businesses with oil, oil tanks. And uh, with Chubb, are the, our insurer partners on this and have provided the, insurer, uh, the insurance capacity and IT platform. We're also working at the moment on... Homespill, which is our B2C product, and uh, we're talking to potential insurers at the moment uh, with a view to launching that um, sometime this year. We're also, as, as Will Brocklebank um, alluded to, we can see that the technology, the, the one thing that, the, although this is a very traditional cover, uh, technology is absolutely essential for, for risk management and we can use Will's technology together with um, emergency response services to put something into place so that we can actually expand the type of risks that we, we can ensure, that we probably wouldn't want to ensure without that technology, so expand our market. And um, obviously, we're, we're very excited about that. Uh, we've got field trials that have started um, and hope to be able to start providing that solution to people with oil tanks shortly. Putting together a, a, a new insurance product is, uh, I think, extremely, extremely difficult. We're, we're, it's really, really important to work with the right insurer partners and, um, and also to collaborate with other specialists and experts. I, I would be very happy to talk, very pleased to talk to anybody in the room uh, that's interested in providing capacity for products. Also, people that might be interested in talking to me about distribution and potentially future funding. Thank you. That's all we have for today. Thanks to Nighty for sponsoring our recent event and to MS Amelin, one of our 2018 gold sponsors. We'll be returning in a couple of weeks to hear from our final three speakers. If you'd like to learn more about Instec London and our future events, you can find us at www.instec.london or on Twitter at instec underscore London. <laughs>